Hello guys, welcome back to a new tutorial on this channel. I'm Max and today we are animating something in Sketch and Principle again. And I have this UI kit right here. And you know, Principle is offering an amazing new feature for a couple of weeks or months now, which um, enable us to just import our Sketch files directly. And we can simply use the import tool right here, click import and it's simply opening our design right here in principle. That's very easy. We can now also check the animation uh, right now. I want to make a uh, screen transition between these two screens, which means we are going to animate a the photo right here. If a user is tapping this photo, he gets to this screen. So the first thing we will need is to have our photo of the second screen also on our first screen. So to simply copy and paste that. And the next thing is to resize it to um, place it just above our normal background photo. Then we simply change the opacity to 0%, just like that, and we make a tab animation, drag the arrow to the second screen like that. So now we just try out what happens when we click our just like invisible photo. Okay, we have to give it a 1% opacity, otherwise this won't work. But here you see it, it's like popping up but we have like this plink uh, problem and we can simply change this by just selecting all the layers of our first artboard or first screen, copying them and pasting them to our second screen. Now drag the photo just above everything and now you will see that we don't have this weird pulling effect anymore because in the background of this huge photo right here, we still have our first screen. Just like that, we see that this font right here is popping up, which looks kind of nice, but we will of course have to make some small adjustments. For example, I don't like how this network clock and so on, like the status bar is going from black to white and I also li don't like how this arrow is changing its color. So what we are going to do is to just select these layers right here and I will give them a different name because at the moment they have the same names as these black layers right here. So I'm going to just attach a W to every layer because it's white, W white. And after we did that, we simply copy this folder and paste it to our first screen. Now it's like laying somewhere above our uh, actual status bar, which is black. This one should actually be called white here as well. And now we are selecting all the layers right here and changing the opacity to 0% because these layers right here will then change to the white. Uh, oh, basically the opacity will go from 0 to 100% with this animation. And we can check this out very easy by just selecting a layer right here. We can also select all of them. So we see that we have an opacity change. And I would just like to select all these uh, bars right here because now you will see if I'm doing this right here, then it's just it just looks like it looked before, but if I drag them to like this position, 
we are going to see a nice transition because the opacity will go uh, like a whole of a second or quarter a second later from 0 to 100% like this and we are going to do the same with the arrow. So simply copy the folder and paste it onto our first artboard. Now here we have it. You see that it's just laying above the first black arrow and we are going to change the opacity to 0%. Now we see that there is a small movement of the arrow which isn't that nice. Of course the opacity should change to about this position in our like timeline right here. So it's at the same speed of the status bar. So basically, yeah, this is like a unit and they should have the same animation and speed. So now we don't really have a problem with these X and Y changes because the opacity is like right there. We can also, of course, say they don't interfere each other by saying the position changings which are going on right here which are kind of weird but which aren't a problem for us are happening before our opacity is changing so we don't have a problem with that i like how these how this like uh headline is coming up but i would like to have these different dots which are like for swiping to the right or to the left to change the photo that's displayed to come up from the bottom. So what we are going to do now is to select them, page controller white, and replace them to our first artboard. Now we can change the position to like this and right now they should actually just come up from the bottom and let's test this. Yeah, you see they are coming up from the bottom. And this is basically a very nice animation, but I'm just uh, like curious what the actual animation of this headline is. I think it's like from this headline to that. So we select this one, select the exact layer name, and here in our timeline, we should see what is happening. So we have different like um, attributes, like the X and Y value and the width and the height, which are changed because of our first artboard, which is this one, and the product name you see that's the exact same like layer and we can if we want to say uh, we give this a different name like pro product name white or W and we can do the same thing if you want to as we did with our um, like page controllers so we can just paste it onto our first screen and we place it below our artboard like this. Let's try it out. You see both of these parts come up from the bottom but the price is still the same. So we are going to do just the same with the price. Let's call this like bright and W and now we are able after pasting it to the first artboard to drag it below it and we get this nice animation of different um, parts of our UI coming up from the bottom. We can do something like more fun by saying 
that the product name animation should be, for example, um, a bit faster than the price or the dots. So let's say the price and the product name and their values are a bit faster like this in comparison to our page controllers and right now we should actually be able to just have a more fun animation because they are faster they are actually too fast if you ask me so we are just giving them the normal speed but we are like taking the page controllers which are these right here and we are saying their value should change um, a little bit uh, slower. So let me just look what we are going to do. We have this page controller animation and right here we have this bar that we are going to drag and it should be it should take a little bit longer like this let's try it out i like that this bottom part the page controller is coming up a little bit later looks more fun to me if you ask me and actually that's just the animation that we did but as you just saw, if I click here, we can not open the photo because we have the product image and it's only in this area. So we are going to do something different. We are saying that this is at 0% and we are grabbing a rectangle and placing it above our screen like this. Now make this 1% visible and I would like to have this one animating a transition to our second screen. So you see that all of our animations just stayed the same because it's the like same uh, animation or transition from the first screen to a different screen only using a different element so we can get rid of this first one and I would just like to say that this is like our um, clickable area to have a unique layer name and all the animation and transition features that we made just as I said stay the same. So that's a new video about animating something in principle. Now that they have this import feature which is working very well it's so much fun to just create animations and like handing them over to our developers and clients and so on. And yeah, if you enjoyed this tutorial, just give me a thumb up or subscribe to this channel if you haven't. So thank you for your time, guys, and enjoy your week. See you.